Good afternoon, my name is Tavasam. I'm an INDS major, obviously concentrating in neurodegenerative disorders of the aged, and I will be presenting to you today on the sociological imagination, a new lens for caregiving with elders. And yes, before I begin, I, oops, sorry, go back one. Um, I'd like to acknowledge my advisors and then a number of other individuals who are here today, but I'll be really brief. Um, Dr. Judah Ranch from the Erickson School and Dr. Robert DeLuty from the Graduate School and Department of Psychology and my INDS advisor, Mr. Mike Alpin, and I'd be happy to argue that they are the best advising team in the entire world after the presentation. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge both um, of my families who are here, my UBC family and also um, mom, dad, and brother. Before I begin, I'd like to ask you to imagine with me. Imagine a room filled with family and a grandchild being presented to a grandmother. Everyone's waiting for her reaction. What will happen? Her joy usually is amazing and her reaction is priceless. But this time, something's different. There's no reaction. Why? What happened? She's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. This was my grandmother, but it could be any of yours. What happened to her as she aged? How can we understand this? My capstone project is about what happened and why it matters. I'll be discussing six main topics with you today. The first of these is why we should take an interdisciplinary approach to care. The second is what disciplinary lenses can be used. The third is sociological imagination, the lens that I found most useful. I did a case study analysis for my capstone and translated care from something that was a burden into something that can then be an opportunity. And finally, I'll leave you with some thoughts. So first, why an interdisciplinary approach to care? In the year 2050, baby boomers, or those born between the years of 1946 and 1964, will number 80 million individuals in the United States. The studies estimate that one in five of these people will be caregivers. Let's do the math together, really quickly. Anyone? 20% of 80 million is 16 million. This is not a tiny problem. We're talking about a large population. And we're also changing what it means to age in America by introducing a concept of aging in community, not aging as individuals. This is what I found most useful when looking at care for people like my grandmother. However, there are so many disciplines that can be used to examine this. I could have used economics, history, biology, anthropology, sociology, psychology, any of the above. But I chose psychology, sociology, and the field of medicine as most valuable. Psychology, because of the way it displays illness and talks about the psychology of an individual. Sociology, because in the end we're talking about a network of care. And the field of medicine, where the duty of care normally resides. But as you can see from the Venn diagram, we've relocated care to the intersections. And that's how I created common ground, by redefining what care means. The technique of redefinition, according to Repco, is defining a concepts or assumptions by using relevant disciplines to bring out a common meaning. We're talking about care from every perspective. This allows us to have multidisciplinary dialogue turn into interdisciplinary collaboration. Each individual expert in the field can now have their opinion on okay. care. But this wasn't enough. I needed another tool. And that's where sociological imagination comes in. This compound concept, which is another bridging strategy used by Miller and Boyce Mancia, is actually a term that bridges domains and summarized and stands for interdisciplinary understanding. There's three parts to this concept. The first is who has power and how is it used. The second, that an individual experience is actually the intersection of history and biography. And finally, how can we make private troubles public issues? This is what I used to examine my case studies for my capstone. There were three case studies that I was able to analyze. The first was of a businesswoman caring for her mother and aunt, both with Alzheimer's disease. The second one was of two sisters caring for a mother with Alzheimer's disease. And the third case study was my own story, a daughter and a granddaughter caring for a grandmother with Parkinson's disease. Although I used sociological imagination and learned a lot, I only have time to touch on a few topics. 
that I have gathered from this analysis. As I indicated to you before, we were looking at the caregiving experience through the lens of sociological imagination, which means for each of those parts, there was a lesson to take away from some of my case studies. First, we talk about how the individual experience is the result of the person's history and biography. This results in the end of my case studies in changing some terminology. As I indicated to you, normally the individual giving care is called a caregiver. But when you relocate care to the intersection through an interdisciplinary lens, you're talking about a care partner. You're not talking about an individual who is acting in one direction. It's both ways. Also, the patient isn't just someone with a diagnosis. They're an individual with their own set of history, with their own set of biography. And that's also important in the experience. And when you share that power, that's exactly why they should be treated as an individual with a diagnosis and not necessarily a patient. I also saw a power dynamic shift within the physician. In the field of medicine, normally the physician is the one making all the calls. But in these particular case studies, they were able to go outside of their network of care and use other professionals in order to fully help the individual. And finally, making private troubles public issues isn't an easy task, but in all three of these cases, the care partner in this case was able to do so. They were able to speak, grow, and learn from their experience. That's taking something inside the home and placing it outside also an emotional release, since diseases that I was talking about take more than one victim. I'd like to leave you today with some final thoughts. Before using an interdisciplinary approach, care was originally just a part of medicine. And by using the concept of sociological imagination to examine it, mobilizing care to the center is definitely what enhances the party's power each individual can now contribute to the end diagnosis. Finally, each individual experience that was once seen as a burden by society, by the family, by the field of medicine, and everyone else involved is now an opportunity, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to learn, and also to bring about an ethic of love, which is how I see myself operating, specifically in my story. And as I begin, I will end with my grandmother, because if you had asked me who I was then and who I am now, and if I had to do that all over again, I would in a heartbeat, because I'm the product of what's happened because of that. I'd like to dedicate this presentation to her and open up the floor for any questions that you may have. that is a unidirectional process, right. could one argue that perhaps what we could view it as, as seeing that there are opportunities, but not losing sight of the fact that some of this work, this process, is nonetheless going to be burdensome? Yeah, absolutely. And in my second case study, that definitely occurred. Um, the power, um, I was talking to Dr. Ranch actually earlier, and the power dynamic in that case study was up and down and up and down. And every time there was an incident, there was more burden and then there was more opportunity. So absolutely. Yeah, it's not unidirectional, but it's hard to depict that on a slide. I'd like you to share more about the role of uh, psychology in your work <clears throat> and how it manifested itself in any of these case studies. Sure. Um, so actually, in all of the case studies where there was a child caring for a parent, which seemed to be the theme also that was running throughout the ones I analyzed, psychology has this very specific view of what a disease like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's does to an individual. So I was able to look at how an illness was described in psychology, but mostly I was able to look at how a self is seen as changing. And so that's kind of the psychological aspect of the field of medicine. So if an individual has a previous self and then they change selves as a result of a diagnosis, that's what I was really trying to dismiss in psychology because it's not about that. And that's what sociological imagination lets me see, is the experience shaped beforehand. So the professional term is? Is trying to see whether or not the aspects of an individual's self after a diagnosis are the ones that they can concentrate on preserving and not necessarily acknowledging. And what do we beforehand. call that in psychology?